Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. Last big topic from the weekend. Uh, look, I just want to continue to give credit to Notre Dame. Because I, I just think that when I look at Notre Dame, you know, throughout much of my life, um, Notre Dame, anytime that you compliment Notre Dame, you always get the pushback of, oh, it's Notre Dame. They're overrated. They're always overrated. They stink. And it's like, I'm not going to lie. There's certainly been moments in time where they have been overrated. There have been games where they have looked bad. There have been games, including in the national championship against Alabama a few years ago, where they just got completely outclassed. But I was watching Notre Dame, and I was thinking about Notre Dame this weekend as it pertained to their game against North Carolina, and I realized this. And I truly believe it. And maybe I'll be wrong, and maybe I'll be proven wrong, and maybe they'll lose by 100 to Clemson in the ACC championship game. Don't think it's likely, but, you know, it could happen. And that's this, is that I've been watching college football in some form or fashion since the mid-1990s, kind of the end of the Lou Holtz era into the Bob Davey era. I've seen a lot of different things, man. When I started watching, Nebraska was the best team in the country. That's how long ago it was. USC had their run. Miami had their run. Now all those teams stink. But in the time that I was wa I've watched college football, now I was alive when Notre Dame won in 88. But in the time that I've been watching, this is the best Notre Dame team of my lifetime. And this is the first time that I really think they can win a national championship. Um, and like I said, first of all, they won it in 88. So they have won it in my life. But I'm not old enough to remember that. But in recent years, they've had good teams, but you knew those teams couldn't compete on the national level, right? 2013, that was the Manti Teo team. They go undefeated. They get to the BCS National Championship game at the time before the playoff. They play Alabama, and they get steamrolled. 28 nothing at halftime. I think it was 42-7 to or 42-14 to was the final score. That was A.J. McCarron's last game. Dominate, yada, 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 yeah. That was one year. And then the second year, most recently, they got to the playoff and got smoked by Clemson. Now, I'll defend Notre Dame a little bit on that one because of the fact that their best player uh, on defense, Julian Love, who is a cornerback, gets hurt. They were playing well defensively. He gets hurt. They're playing against Trevor Lawrence. He throws the ball all over the field. But they still lost. They still got dominated. This year, though, I think it's different. I think it's for a few reasons. One, I thought it was really interesting that on the broadcast of the game, the broadcasters who were Kirk Herbstreet and Chris Fowler for the North Carolina game basically said, like, you know, we were talking to Brian Kelly, and he kind of brought up a very interesting point, which is that basically um, they have kind of figured out over their 10 years at Notre Dame, you know, like what their identity is, right? And we just talked about Alabama and how they've kind of evolved into this offensive behemoth and whatever. Every program has to have an identity. And what Fowler and Herbstreit were really talking about was that Notre Dame has found their identity. They are going to get the best players or dominate the offensive and defensive lines and work out from there, right? Notre Dame, we talked about it on a previous episode, big, academic, you know, small academic school. It's hard to get in everybody. They can't recruit from the same pool as, as, as Georgia or Florida or Alabama or, uh, or Ohio State. But what they can do is get elite offensive linemen, elite defensive linemen, and then work their way outward from there. And I do think that's largely reflected on this year's team um, in which you look at this team and they have one of the best rushing offenses in college football and one of the best rushing defenses in college football and one of the best defenses in general. And it's because of that. If you watch the Clemson game, they completely controlled both lines in that game. Now, Clemson had some guys beat up, all that stuff, whatever. But they're going to recruit really well on the offensive line, able to run the ball. They're going to recruit really well on the defensive line, be able to control the line of scrimmage. And then from there, they'll pick and choose their skill position guys. And they're not going to get every skill position guy they want. Uh, they're not going to be able to recruit every skill position guy that they want. But they've had their guys. I mean, Will Fuller is unbelievable for the Houston Texans. Went to Notre Dame. Chase Claypool is unbelievable for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Went to Notre Dame. Um, you know, K K Kyle Rudolph is a tight end. He's not really a skill position guy. But he's been unbelievable. Went to Notre Dame. 
And so they're going to try to dominate the offensive and defensive lines. And like I said, they basically have an offensive lineman drafted every year. Ron, Ronnie Stanley, who's with the Baltimore uh, Ravens, Mike McGlinchey, blah, 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 blah. And then defensively, they're going to do the same. So one, I think they found their identity. And two, this season specific is when I think it all came together. You look at this team and they know exactly who they are. Like I just said, they're going to run the ball. They're going to control the line of scrimmage and they're going to win games. And when I look at them in the bigger picture, I kind of think outside of Alabama, they're probably the team that has the least question marks of anybody in college football. Now, I'm not saying their ceiling is as high as other teams, but what is their real weakness, right? Like you look at Ohio State, their secondary stinks. Like their secondary really stinks. Uh, Clemson has had trouble running the ball at times, has, tr- has had trouble uh, you know, in other areas uh, of the field. Notre Dame doesn't really have a weakness. And the other thing I love about Notre Dame, they come to play every single week. And that was crystallized to me on Friday when they played North Carolina. They come into this game, Mac Brown, he's got this high-powered offense. North Carolina's played other teams tough in the ACC since Mac Brown's got there. Notre Dame comes in as just a six-point favorite, which feels really low for the team that's ranked number three in the country or number two in the country or whatever they are. And what does Notre Dame do? Close early, 14-14, and then they dominate late. 31-14 is the final score, or 31-17 is the final score. They outscore them 14-3 down the stretch, and the game after the first quarter is, a, is ultimately uh, never really competitive. The score is close, but Notre Dame did what they wanted to do and pulled away late. And I just said, like, it just, that's when it hit me. I'm like, this team is not going to be that team that chokes away a big game. Now, maybe they will. I mean, they still got Syracuse and Wake Forest, so it's not inconceivable. But, like, the last two weeks were the weeks that, like, if they were going to lose, it felt like it was going to be the last two weeks. They were playing Boston College, coming off that big uh, Clemson win. You felt like, okay, they're going to – Boston College is tough. They'll give them a hard time, blah, blah, blah. No, they go to Boston College, completely dominate. They do the same with North Carolina. And I just sat there and said, man, dude, like, this team is just a juggernaut. They're not afraid. They're good to go. Um – And I'm really curious. I'm really curious because I think they're going to go back to the ACC championship game. It's going to be a completely different deal with Trevor Lawrence on the field for Clemson. And I do think like Clemson should be favored and will be favored. Clemson was favored in, in the first game at Notre Dame without Trevor Lawrence. So they should be favored in this one as well. But when I look at Clemson or when I look at Notre Dame, I just see one of the most complete teams. I see a team with no real weakness. I see a team that comes to play every week. And I'll just say this, man, I really do think that they can compete with anybody and potentially for a lot of people, a lot of us listening, win the first national championship uh, that any of us will remember. And I do think this this notion that they're always overrated, I think has come and gone. All right, I think that's it for today's Aaron Torres Sports Podcast. Man, 